what do stories sound like? To talk about that, we're first going to need to talk about the field of data sonification. As you all know probably about the field of data visualization, which is taking your data and transforming it to charts and graphs to understand it a little better. Data sonification does the same thing, but instead, you're represent representing your data through sound. I'm going to play you a few examples just so you have a sense of what I'm talking about. So that was the sound of the stock market crashing. <laughs> this next one, we're examining Olympic athletes at the finish line. And it's one thing to see these numbers, but to hear it, you actually can get a better sense of how close it really was. This is listening to Wikipedia edits. The bells indicate additions, and the string pl plucks indicate subtractions. This is a piece done by James Murphy of LCD Sound System. This is not a one-to-one -one mapping. Instead, many variables, such as the game score, the set score, the temperature, work together to create a more atmospheric piece. So that's actually pretty nice to listen to. So data sonification is essentially a mapping. It's mapping a variable in your data to a variable in the sound output. It's often a one-to-one -one mapping, but not always. And sound in music has specific strengths. It's temporal, it's layered and multidimensional, it can carry complexity, it's unique, and it's emotional. It's very easy to move the listener. So what types of data work with sonification? Um, anything that has patterns or structure or that's cyclical, um, it's good for small units. It's good for data streams, for conveying emotion, for being unique, and it's good for music generation. Which brings me to my work, generating music from text. So Transprose is an algorithm that creates music from literature. And it started based on a project I'd done earlier where I was translating um, the grammar and parts of speech and writing style of different authors into music. This was a simpler one-to-one -one mapping, but you can hear the difference in writing sty styles between these four authors. I enjoyed doing that project, but with Transprose, I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to see if it was possible to create songs from the emotional content of novels. And so that led me to my main question. Was it e even possible to translate emotions from one medium, a novel, into another, 
a musical piece. And at first, it was not. My early experimentations sounded terrible. They were lacking many things, including complexity, order, and emotional accuracy. So this sounds very pleasant and lovely, but it's actually Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. So I fixed that. So transprose is a mapping between the text analysis and the music composition. So I started with text analysis. And because I was focusing on emotional content, um, I used this thing called the NRC Word, Emoti Word Emotion Association Lexicon, which took the 14,000 most common English words and had them tagged with eight different emotions and two emotional states, positive and negative. And that allowed me to calculate the presence of eight, these eight emotions throughout the novel. And with that data, I could move on to the music composition. But first, I had to learn to think about emotions. How could I classify them? And it turns out there's a whole field that does this already. And two of the variables that are often used to categorize emotions are valence, which is the scale from positive to negative, and arousal, which is the scale from active to passive. So then I had to think about what in music overlaps. And it turns out that there are many variables in music that influence either valence or arousal. So at this point, I had eight emotion arcs, which I used to generate a melody. And I did that by mapping low emotion counts to more consonant notes and high emotion counts to more dissonant notes, where the end result was that spikes in emotion equaled more interesting melodic movement. So here, in the pieces you're about to hear, the plot is heard not in the literal events, but in the emotional representation of events. So without further ado, I will play you three pieces. Now for something on the other end of the spectrum. So this next one I'm about to play is interesting because the protagonist is doing terrible, terrible things in kind of a happy tone. Now that we know we can actually translate emotions from one medium to another, 
The next question is why? Why would we do that? And to answer that for myself, I really like this quote from uh, artificial intelligence pioneer Marvin Minsky, which says, a thing or idea seems meaningful only when we have several different ways to represent it, different perspectives and different associations. Then we can turn it around in our minds, so to speak. However, it seems at the moment, we can see it another way and never come to a full stop. In other words, we can think about it. So mapping something into a domain different than its own gives it that, that domain's vocabulary, language, and its context, and you'll never be able to think of it the same way again. Thank you. <laughs>